Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. I will be streaming tonight right here on the channel and on Twitch around 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time, so make sure to come out for that. And today, we are going through our dev blog roundup for this week. What I normally do here with these dev blog videos is I like to wait and get to most of the dev blogs, if not all the dev blogs, done in one video. Wargaming tends to release uh, dev blogs around Wednesday night, Thursday morning, at least for North American time, it seems. And unless it's something super crazy, whatever, I just round them all together and go through them in one video. Of course, Wargaming also likes to randomly release them throughout the week, too, but normally it's Wednesday night, Thursday morning. So we are going to go through them today. We have a couple of big topics to discuss from these dev blogs. First off, early access to European DDs, convoys is coming back, and the feature that was mentioned a little while ago where we can enter battle immediately after our ship gets destroyed is also coming in 12.4. I think that's a great thing. We'll talk more about that when we get there. And then two, super containers are getting changed in a way that is, I would say, better for us. But we'll get there when we get there. So let's go ahead and go in the order of their release. Link to these dev blogs are in the description down below. Alright, so first off, Early Access to European DDs. An update 12.4, Early Access to European Destroyers will begin in honor of the event. Thematic permanent camouflages for Tier 8 to 10 ships and a commemorative flag have been added to the game. The Port of Fjords have been decorated for the occasion. Uh, I believe this is probably the camo they're talking about. This is the Gdansk, the Tier 10 Panero DD. Uh, the flag is right here. Here's what the Fjords port is going to look like during the event. Looks like kind of, it reminds me of like Jules Verne, kind of, sort of, um, designs. You know, if you guys have seen like the artwork of the Jules Verne books or like any of the movies based off of his books, that's what this reminds me of at least. Alright, so that's all they have for the event right now. Convoys! Convoys is returning! This is the mode where one team has to escort a convoy through the map. The other team's objective is to sink the convoys. So let's see what they have to say about that. Convoy will return once again update 12.4. Battles will be held in a 12v12 format utilizing tier 8 to 10 ships. We've updated the battle type since the last iteration. Added a new map to the mix, Haven. Updated bot behavior, transport ships now change their speed as dodge torpedoes instead of changing their course. The interface was improved. Detailed information about the battle type will be shared at a later date. So, convoys mode in general, um, I like the idea. There's a couple of things that they need to work on for it though. It's very easy for the attacking team to sink the convoy ships first off. Um, and they, they, they have improved a lot. They've done things like what we see on the map they show us here. They split the convoy up into two tracks. That way, you know, the enemy team just can't, you know, wait for the convoy to get somewhere and just blast them all to, to crap. And the torpedo dodging, the bots were really good at torpedo dodging, but then, like, they would be obviously off track and they'd have to get back on track, which, of course, would slow them down. And, you know, it's just something difficult to do with a push the cart mode like most modern um third person first person shooters have in them like an overwatch you know you have to push the payload or whatever it's difficult to have a mode like that when you can destroy the payload um and that's just some uh, a nature of the mode that is you know just gonna have to be a thing because i mean you know can't make the convoy ships invincible um i think they got the best iteration of this with airship escort because you can't destroy the airships they're you know floating in the air above it makes sense and it you know did it better than convoys in my opinion but i would very much like to see convoys make its way into the game and eventually become part of random battles just to add more flavor to the mode you know it's a more historically based mode because obviously, you know, navies did have the escort convoys in World War II. But I'm glad it is returning. I'm glad they're still working on it and trying to get it to work. And I look forward to playing it in this new iteration. We'll see how the ships stopping and, you know, dropping the anchors and stuff for trying to dodge torpedoes will go. I just feel like, you know, even though they might be able to dodge the torpedoes, they, they, they stop the first set. They, they dodge the first set, let's say. But then you know they're going to break for the first set, so you have the second set, and then you just nuke the convoy ship. We'll see how it goes. 
All right, repeated battle entry with the same ship. Update 12.4 introduces a new feature that will allow players to enter a new battle with a ship that was just destroyed without having to wait for the current battle to conclude. This way, you'll be able to fight more battles playing your favorite ships during a game session, and this option should help you speed up your game progress on your favorite ships. You will be able to enter a new battle after your ship is destroyed directly through the exit screen of the current one. This change won't, affle won't affect clan battles. Alright, so, um, that's, we, they throw clan battles in there, because typically even if you get sunk, you just sit there and wait for your team to be done, and then, you know, you all go, you, you all go back to port at the same time, you know. That, that's odd but anyway yes I think it's a good change um, obviously because with the way that the game has gone today there's a lot of situations where let's say you know you you get singled out by a CV or by a submarine and you get sunk you know in the first five or six minutes of the game because of that and that's frustrating and it's super aggravating we have to wait in port to just play that ship that let's say you just grounded out to I don't know the uh, the Amagi and you really want to play the Amagi but you get in battle and again you get singled out by a CV or a DD and you get sunk you know, well before the game ends, and now you have to go back to port and either wait for the Amagi or play something else. So I think it's good from that point of view. Now there certainly is another point of view where, yeah, but the waiting period would encourage people to play other ships, other ship classes, and things like that. I think that's a pretty strong argument too. But, I mean, nothing really stopped people that really wanted to play their favorite ship from just waiting for that ship either in battle or back in port so I think just letting those people go on and get into the next battle is a good thing I I mean there's still the penalty for just exiting the battle uh, because I know some people are gonna say well that this is makes it easier for like griefers to just leave battle and just you know go back into uh, battle with their with their ship um, I would like them to clarify if that still applies here like if my ship isn't sunk but if I exit battle can I just go back into battle again because that's going to be an issue, I think, because players are going to maybe see, like, submarines, and they don't want to play with submarines, so they'll just exit battle, and then go back into matchmaking with uh, their ship. Uh, if they would clarify that, that's something that I'm very curious about. But if maybe they have a system like War Thunder, where War Thunder, if you die within, like, the first two minutes, typically that means, like, you're trying to, you know, just leave the battle and get into a new one. Uh, they, they put a five-minute lock on your crew. So, I'd like to see... What they what their plan is to deal with that, or if they already have a plan to deal with that. All right, content edition changes, new additions. Kleber CLR. I'm assuming that means color, with similar parameters to Kleber, but with a unique appearance. It's yellow. It's yellow like Bumblebee Kleber, and a Kleber CLR commander flag. I wonder if this ship is going to be the one they throw into like the random bundles or whatever for the early access to the pan euro dds like you know you have the tier 9 then you have a colbert color in there that you could get i mean premium colbert if it is like a premium colbert which it looks like it is okay i like colbert i wouldn't mind having a premium colbert to make money off of new temporary temporary resource colorful tokens of course Colorful regatta contain. Oh, are they going with the containers again for this event? Oh, I think they are. So underneath the colorful regatta container section, there is a content and drop rates uh, drop down menu for these containers. Let me take a screenshot of that. So yeah, one slot, ten colorful tokens, twenty for co colorful tokens, ten colorful tokens. So you're you're two hundred colorful colorful tokens i mean so you're going to get colorful tokens out of these oh they looks like they're going back to the containers oh and then the second slot you can get credits and the third slot uh signal flags this is interesting because they, 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 they strayed away from the containers for the early access event some time ago but it looks like the containers are back and the random bundles might be gone, and the containers might be replacing the random bundles. This is going to be interesting. Okay, ga game. Okay, wargaming. Alright, um, I think that's about it. They talked about, they added some achievements for future clan battle seasons, and then uh, they've overhauled some notifications. Okay, so on to the super containers now. So, changes to containers, closed testing 12.4. We're here to explain the changes to containers that are due to be applied in update 12.4. Super containers, updated con contents and drop rate. 
The super container drop mechanism has been changed. Now the 0 to 100 progress bar in which the super container drop is randomly placed in is filled at a faster rate. Regular daily containers fill their bar by 3 units, up from 1.5, and try your luck containers fill it by 9 units, up from 4.5. This way super containers will drop twice as often as before. However, when opened, super containers will drop fewer doubloons, premium account days, and other resources, and will have a reduced chance of dropping ships. As a result of the doubled frequency of super containers, players will have more opportunities to receive ships from these containers. Since the chance of a ship being inside a super container has only been reduced by a factor of 1.5, so from 1.5% to 1%, the total amount of other items and resources received will not change significantly. So here's the new drop rates, so I'll screenshot that. Well, the new contents and the new drop rates. So you're going to be getting a super container at double the rate now. But the chance of getting a ship has only gone down from 1.5% to 1%. So you're losing a third of the chance, but you're getting double the amount. So overall, you should, on paper, be getting more ships from a super container. Now, to be clear, getting a ship from a super container is not a common thing, because you don't get them that often. I've gotten maybe three ships from super containers. And I've been playing for six years. Um, yeah. So it's not like super containers were a major source of ships in the first place. So, yeah. It's a change. It's a change, I think, for the better. Um, I mean, what, what I really like getting from this from the um, containers is the coal. Because you have a 10% chance of getting it, well, 7,500 coal now. But, I mean, still, like... Coal is coal. Coal is great. I like getting that. Um, so, yeah, overall, sounds like a good change. It'll be interesting to see, like, what the drop rate really is once we get this change. I mean, again, it should be what they say here. They've been pretty open about drop rates for the past year or two now. So that's um, that's something, to, something worth keeping our eyes on. Okay, so there's been some other changes to containers, too. A uh, steam super container, similar changes would be applied to the steam super container with small differences. The chance of receiving 50 standard economic bonuses of the same type has been changed to 4%. There's a 4% chance to get 25 steam camouflages. French destroyer containers, both the regular and premium versions of the containers, have been renamed to French Squadron, and their contents have been changed. Uh, the French one, here, I shall screenshot this if you want to see it. Let me get both of them open. And the premium one as well. So if you want to take a look at that, there's that. Uh, Soviet era containers are getting changed as well. Uh, the contents of both the regular and premium version of their container have been changed. And again, here's a screenshot for those of you that want to see those changes for the containers. All right. As always, please note that all information in the, dev in the, in the development blog is preliminary. Announced adjustments and features may change multiple times during testing. The final information will be published on our games and website. Alright, so overall, um, interesting thing with the Pan Euro DDs event. Um, I'm interested to know if these containers are really going to be the way that, or a replacement for the random bundles. What is lacking from these containers is a ship. Normally the random bundle that you see in the armory, like right now for the Pan American light cruisers, has the tier 9 in it. But there's no tier 9 ship in these containers yet. So these might be another thing that's just being added on top of the sequential bundles. I'm sorry, the, uh, the, uh, the random bundles. Which would be, yeah. I mean, they tried something a little bit different with this early access event. With uh, way more bundles in the, in the random bundles at a lower cost. So they might be trying something different with this event as well. So that's probably the most interesting thing for me in this set of dev blogs. Um, again, the ability to go right back into battle, we knew that was coming. So I'm glad that that's getting implemented. Convoys, again, one of the... Uh, I am looking forward to that. I want to see how 
that mode has evolved so forth. And again, Super Contagious sounds like a better change overall for the players, but again, we shall see how it does in practice. So in true Wargaming fashion, after I made this video originally, they released the Spanish Cruisers dev blog. After they made that video and pushed this video back to Saturday, they release another dev blog talking about the sister ship to the Kuznazov coming to the game with the Dmitry Pozarski. So, let's go ahead and get on into this video with this very weird video that says I'm streaming tonight, even though I'm not, because that was Friday's video. But anyway, let's get on into it. Not a lot here in this individual dev blog, but again, very interesting thing. So, Dmitry Pozarski, closed testing 12.4. Soviet cruiser Dmitry Posarsky has been added to the game for testing. The Project 68 biz cruiser Dmitry Posarsky was laid down in Leningrad at plant number 189 in February 1952. Launched in June 1953 and commissioned in December 1954. In December 1955, she was integrated into the Northern Fleet. In the summer of that year, she was transferred to the Petro, uh, Petropavlovsk Kamatsky, oh man, Kamchatsky, becoming part of the 14th cruiser division of the Pacific Fleet. In 1961, she was transferred to the 9th Division of the Anti-Submarine Ships, and in 1967, to the 10th Operational Squadron, permanently located in the Indian Ocean. The ship is armed with 12 152mm main battery guns, which only use AP shells with improved ricochet angles and flat ballistics. The cruiser is also armed with torpedoes with very short range. The ship deals high damage per minute and also has quick rudder shift time. The cruiser also has bad concealment. The consumables are represented by short burst smoke. Hydro or DFAA in one slot. Okay, so let's take a look at the ship's stats here. So, um, Dmitry Pozarski, hit points 40,700, 25 millimeters of plating, 30 second fires, uh, 18.1 kilometer range. The AP shells do 3,300 maximum damage. Velocity is 950 meters a second, 7 second reload time, uh, 2.0 sigma, max dispersion 158. Uh, they don't mention the, the ricochet angles here exactly, but I'm assuming they'll have, you know, improved pins, something like the Americans. And uh, torpedo tubes, 2x5, 533s. Uh, what's the range? 4 kilometers. So, yes, yeah, Soviets, cruiser, torpedo range. So, self-defense torpedoes, basically. Um, and speeds, 33 knots. Rudder shift time, 6.5 seconds. Again, damage con, hydro, sh sh shout, shawty. Short burst smoke generator, 50 second action time, duration time of 40 seconds, reload is 70 seconds, you get 5 charges of that. So, a more open water gunboaty Kutuzov? Because the Kutuzov's thing is that it sits in smoke, sits back at long range, and it can, you know, melt everything down. This thing is seeming to be more like open water... AP spammy, but with short burst smoke. Um, with the armor layout of the Kutuzov, it's great when you're angled, but like it doesn't have an, a heel. So, you know, you can't sit there like you can't tank at it. You, you're probably going to bounce the shells that come at you. It was another cruiser or battles or like a battleship with smaller caliber guns, but like you know, at tier 8, you can see tier 10. You got 20 inch guns at tier 10 now. Got a lot of 18 inch guns at tier 10 now. And you guys know that it had the Kudazov or shot the Kudazov. When you catch its broadside, it's kind of just dead. So if they're going for more of this, like in the open style of Kudazov, I think it's going to need a little bit of an armor buff and probably a heal. Um, it does have radar, which is great. You know, there's tons of ships that already have radar already. So it's nice to see that it doesn't have, have that. And I think it's going to really going to come, going to come down to, to like how good are the improved pins. Because like Soviet AP already bites pretty hard. And then you're dropping improved pins on top of that. So, yeah. I think it's an interesting side grade to the Kutuzov. I will say that. That is something that I think is, is very cool. So, that's my two cents on the Pozarski. I can't wait for more information to come out about her. So... Well, I'll stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. I will be streaming tonight right here on the channel and on Twitch. If you want to come out for that around 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time to around 9 p.m. U.S. Central Time. So make sure to come out for that if you want to catch me live and come hang out with us as we all 
suffer. <laughs> now, last week, the matches were pretty good. Hopefully, we, that will be continued over into this week. So, hope you guys have, have a wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.